1441 again with NASCAR Thunder 2004. And in this episode of our rookie season in career mode, we are going to be completing race 27 of 36, which is going to be at New Hampshire International Speedway for the Sylvania 300. In the last episode, we raced at Richmond and finished in 42nd. We made pretty much no mistakes during the race. We ran a perfect race, but a perfect race in not good equipment is very, very bad. That's Richmond for you. I can't wait till we actually run well at that track. But the races before that were all pretty darn good with the 6th place finish at Bristol 18th whenever we went to Darlington. We're going to this race with Dale Reynolds' paint scheme just like we did last time at New Hampshire where I totaled my car at like lap 19 or lap 20 just because I want to redeem myself from that terrible disaster. The last race, I think Jeff Gordon won getting his second win of the season, which is right here. Yeah, that is correct. That was the Chevy Rock and Roll 400 to use Metallica King's paint scheme because rock and roll, of course. So after that race, Dale Earnhardt Jr., closed in on Tony Stewart's point lead by one point. He's really making progress. Tony Stewart, uh, we're going to New Hampshire. I don't know what that means. Who's better in New Hampshire? Tony Stewart, Dylan Hart Jr. I don't know if either of them ever won at that track, to be honest. We are in 29th place in the point standings after that horrible finish. 30 points behind Johnny Benson, so I don't think it could even take us one race to get back there. I think we could just go ahead and race at um, New Hampshire and possibly get back into 28th. But uh, I'm really working on getting to 25th before the season ends. I think it's possible. That's kind of what my goal is right now. And then you got the driver respect. Uh, usually David Green's not racing, but he's at neutral. Robbie Gordon, we crashed into Kevin Harvick at some point during that race, but I don't even remember it. And then you got the awards. Jim McMurray, always getting rookie of the race. I got it three times in a row, but uh, man, I can't get rookie of the year. He's all the way up in like 18th in the point standings. After this race, we'll have four races left until the fabrication shop arrives. Really looking forward to that. We need it for the bodies and downforce draft and whatever. Uh, we've got some repairing or overhauling to do on this equipment that we're about to use after this race. And as far as chassis go, we have four races left on building our third chassis. So that's great. That'll be three after this race. And uh, yeah, engines. We just um, put this into overall after we finished the last race. So we're using a fresh engine at New Hampshire. This is technically a short track slash speedway. So either way, we're going to have some speed and acceleration coming off the corners, which is really great. 61 power, 56 efficiency. Uh, hopefully this is balanced enough. And this is the equipment that we're going to be using as far as body goes whenever we go to um, New Hampshire, which we'll also be getting uh, probably overhauled after we do this race. 53 downforce, 55 drafting. I think I need more downforce at a flat track like this than drafting, but oh well, whatever works. At least it ain't technically bad. And then we've got to think about the sponsorship. After this race, all of our sponsorship is going to be coming to an end because it was an 18 race contract and this is race 27 in a bit. So I think after this video comes out, there will be another paint scheme contest video where you guys get to make the paint schemes for the second season. We're still going to be using these paint schemes for the remainder of the season, even with these new sponsors. The primary is the one that's going to be based off of. I did some test runs simulating after this race to see what possible sponsors I could get. I saw We Care. I saw the uh, UAW or whatever. Coca-Cola somehow wants to be on my car. Possibly we could have that for an average finish in 20th place. That was weird as fuck. I'm like... Like Coca-Cola would be on somebody's car for an average finish in 20th. Like, think about it. But anyhow, let's get to the race weekend. Click Quick Select. With a car rating of 59, we are going to New Hampshire to qualify. By the way, I'm not wearing a shirt because the first video of this game this week, I was wearing my jacket. And the second one, I had my, my work clothes, my black t-shirt. So this time I was like, well, I need to have different attire every video. So what I'll do is I'll have my chest hairs as my attire. And, well, there you have it. My setup for qualifying is going to be one turns wedge, uh, yeah, positive one, and then 15 on the PSI because I need this to be a very short run car. Like, I need it to only last like a few laps on tires because that's what you want during qualifying. We'll turn up the tire pressure to like 20 once we're done with it. Got 19th on my first lap. Last time I came here, I qualified 29th on the first lap and then 27th on the second. So, that's a clear sight that this car is just that much better. I mean, I think uh, our chassis and body is still better than what we came here with last time because I think it was all worn equipment because I didn't have that thing with the engine being back and forth with its uh, term of condition. And, uh, well, this time, even with our worn chassis and body, it's going to be better. Then we got our engine, which is just fresh and really good. 13th place, starting on the inside. Probably going to be losing a lot of positions during this race for the most part, but before you go into anything, I want to acknowledge the fact Tony Stewart is starting on pole and... Uh, before I went to qualifying, I found out Dylan R. Jr. is starting in 14th. Tony Stewart, you go out there, dominate the race, lead a bunch of laps, and 
Dylan or Junior, I'll overheat. Fuck you. Okay, tire pressure. We'll set this to, I think, uh, 23 PSI, maybe 22. I don't know. I think I get more acceleration if I put on 22 by just a little bit. So I'll just leave it on 22. I need acceleration on a track like this anyways. And here's the suspension I was just talking about a while ago. I put it down to 0 0.5 after my pit stop last time we came here. And within just like three laps, I think it was, we just spun the race car back into the outside wall, blew the fuel cell, and I think just before that we crashed into the 37 car, David Green. So that's why David Green is probably pissed off. And he hasn't been in that many races, so it's still left over despite having been an entire, you know, like, five, six races since then. So, let's get this race underway. Looks like Ricky Rudd is starting on the outside of the pole. We've got Matt Kinseth next to us. There's Dale Jr. I qualified in front of Dale Jr. I'm just now realizing that. We're underway for 30 laps. Let's just take it really easy on the first corner because I should be getting used to the fact that we have much more tight race car with this tire pressure adjustment. But the car will last much longer now that I have it set to 22. I think I had it 15 all until the pit stop last time. I don't know if I made any adjustments to my tire pressure during my pit stop. I think it was only the wedge. But yeah, this car really doesn't want to turn that much right now on its fresh tires, so I just hit Sterling Marlin. I think I actually have enough power to keep up with these guys in the straightaway, so that's weird. It's just I have to slow down so much more in the corners with this tire pressure. And the full setup is like 25 PSI at every single track, so setting at 22 is not something that abnormal for the game. It's just this is how bad our chassis is right now. It's worn equipment and it's still not that good yet. The engines are where best right now. So we can take advantage of that, not lose positions as quickly. Adele and our junior are struggling to get past Robbie Gordon and me. We're three wide down the front straightaway. That was interesting. Oh god, Tar is not wanting to turn going to turn one. We're gonna hit Big Murray. For some reason Jerry Nadu ran into me. And like that was all him. Like I have to hit the brakes eventually, you know. Are we trying to go four wide right now? Well, I'm not. I'm gonna hit the brakes. Sorry Ryan Newman, but yeah, now, now they're three wide. Oh my god, I can't get this car to turn the corners. Oh, we're in third gear, so I'm going to bump into Ryan Newman, and it, I magneted it into him afterwards, so I don't know. I'm expecting the car to finish corners, but it just can't do that. So I'm just bumping and banging. Well, I guess this really is a short track because I can't really avoid this much of this nonsense. At least we didn't get spun by the wall. I think that's more of a NASCAR Thunder 2003 thing off the corners. You, you touch the wall, and all of a sudden your nose like just gyrates off of the fucking thing. Gyrating. Ooh, that left me some gyrating. I'm gonna dread playing NASCAR Thunder 2003 just because of what happened when you hit walls in that game. I've been trying to practice for the uh, the the season. What the fuck is happening behind me? <laughs> I just heard that. I'm pretty sure you did too, but um, I've been getting really nervous about uh, NASCAR Thunder 2003 with the Las Vegas difficulty there. The AR just, they have much better cars. I've been practicing, trying to find a way to not do bad at Las Vegas and just getting practice done because I have a let's play with um, Bobby Labonte on the way in 2019 I think probably after NASCAR 07 as well okay so we're gonna go three wide in turn one but I'm gonna get out of that situation now we're really losing positions because this car is still tight because these guys haven't gotten their tire wear yet I think they're on their 25 PSI setup so even once tire wear actually comes on we're not gonna be passing people so we're gonna have to get positions by taking a pit stop at a good time. I talked about uh, getting a better pit crew if I possibly can after the last race, at the end of the last video, I think, but I never actually did that. I forgot to do it. At least I think I forgot to do it. I swear I didn't do it yesterday when I was recording that video. Okay, trying to get this position back from Terry Labonte. Ugh, I'm turning all the way, Terry Labonte. I'm sorry. It's just I so badly want to get back in the 27th. So I started 27th last time, and here we are once again, back in 27th at New Hampshire. It's magic. It's magic. I'm no muggle. I played the Harry Potter video games. People are starting to take pit stops. There went Prep Bodine down pit road. For a while I was catching them, but it just couldn't happen. I'm going to take my pit stop in the next few laps. I am overdriving turn one now. It's like I start commentating, then I can't do anything right, but I don't even think that was avoidable. Oh my god, the shifts in the third gear can't even keep me off the outside wall. This is such a wide racetrack. That's how bad the car is. I still can't stay off the freaking wall. I can't even say enter a corner right anymore. Come on, 22 PSI, 22. 22 PSI car, and I dump Rusty Wallace into the outside wall, bringing out a caution. Well, that's going to make my race better, but now he hates me. I think that's the first time that I've actually wrecked somebody in this entire season, so it took me 27 races. 
I'm trying to get back into the groove, but two cars are trying to pass me at the same time because this car just keeps overdriving corners. I'm sorry, Rusty Wallace. I got a bunch of dislikes in the video now. Uh, well, I don't need to see this again. That's a bad camera angle anyways. Okay, we'll take our pit stop under the caution. I think I just gained a bunch of positions because of that. I don't know. Maybe it'll play out that way. We're in 21st place, just like we were a while ago, of course. So we'll get four tires. Um, I've got damages repaired for that. Not a surprise to me. And we'll add a full tank of fuel. This is the setup. We're going to have to stick with it. Uh, maybe I should have turned up the tire pressure a little bit more. But then again, on fresh tires, the car didn't want to turn. And once they got worn, it really didn't want to freaking turn. I was still getting runs off the corners. I noticed I was catching up to them within the last few laps before they started taking pit stops just because of, you know, shifting into third gear. Then I started shifting in third gear, and it was slamming to the outside wall because I was trying to take advantage of that third gear, obviously. So... Uh, got a camera on the roof, but anyways, a uh, tire changer fell over because, yeah, I really should have tried getting a better pit crew, and that was probably biting me on the ass. I'm in 23rd place. Um, how many of these people behind me are lapped down? Uh, apparently none of them, so I guess we're all in the lead lap. I've got fresh tires. Let me slam the brakes because they're making contact up here. Are people running out of gas? What is happening right now? I see people keep on slowing down in front of me and checking up and shit. These are positions that I could be getting if they weren't doing this. It's a good thing that that mistake happened under the caution with that pit stop, because if it hadn't, then, yeah, we'd have lost many more positions. But I dumped Rusty Wallace. Now I've got to stay away from him for the remainder of this freaking race so that I don't get wrecked. Until he tries running me over into turn one, I don't know. Wow, that was such a freaking slide into that corner. And he's stuck behind Hermie Sadler. And I can still pass him with these guys. They're trying to go four wide over there and front me out too. Ugh. Oh my goodness. I just really need to focus right now because when I'm surrounded by traffic, it doesn't make it that easy. But whenever I'm commentating, that makes it even harder. Okay. Good dive off of four. The driver's like Jack Spray, Brett Bodine, and I've got fresh tires, so I should be able to pass some of them at least. I'm bound to start losing positions more than actually gaining them, though. Man, now we're on fresh tires. I'm sliding so much more because I'm trying to drive this car like it's on worn tires. This is not something that most people wouldn't do. Ugh. So... About to have 10 laps to go. I rear-ended Brett Bodine, but I tried to do it in a way that wouldn't cost either of us to wreck. That was all me getting on the brakes too late. You know, I like this track and all. It's creating some good racing because the AI raced it all weird and it's hard for you, but I'm just saying that uh, I'm just not driving it very good this season. And part of it's because the car is bad. Part of it's because I guess I'm not that good at driving whenever I have to commentate like this. Uh, maybe once the car is better, it'll be easier to drive this track and commentate. I'm actually making up positions right now. There's Kenny Wallace. Why am I below the yellow line? Oh, I'm below the yellow line because I want to make it four wide. That's my reasoning. Oh, God, there's the two cars. He's going to hit me. He's not going to hit me? Okay. That just really completely defied this game's rivalry system because he was right next to me for a pretty good length, and then he was like, I'm not going to hit you. They're still scrubbing up against each other, racing side by side, three wide through the corners and everything, making sparks, so... Oh, don't rear in Robbie Gordon. Yeah, they're all stacking up right now, so it's giving me the opportunity to make positions. For some reason, Rusty Wallace just never been wanting to hit me. Oh, Jeff Green. Actually, his rivalry thing dropped down to 58% because he completed a clean pass on me, so that's why he's no longer wanting to do it. So, yeah, I was more confident about making that pass at that point. But I don't know how it went down to begin with or whatever, like how he actually didn't hit me whenever he went to pass me a while ago. This is 60. That's, like, usually the threshold. I am making up positions right now, but at the same time, I swear I just passed like five cars and I've only made it up to 20th. Well, at least Rusty Wallace race is not really falling apart because of that. If anything, I actually helped him because he was on the track and people were taking pit stops, so he got to be ahead of all those people. I did a good thing while in the process wrecking somebody. Like, I made his race better by dumping him. And he's not Jamie McMurray. I didn't, that's not the same thing like... Jamie McMurray did that to me at Las Vegas, if you remember, like, race three of the season. And now I did it to him, except that was much worse. Hmm. Jamie McMurray blessed me at Las Vegas, and I do that same thing to Rusty Wallace, but completely different. Don't hit him, JC. This car is just very wobbly. Like, I can't get it to hold a line like, straight away or just whatever. Okay, don't hit Rusty Wallace. It's the last thing that we need. But I'm fast enough to pass a bunch of these guys. David Green is running a good race, so... A uh, clean pass can actually help me make that rivalry thing go down much quicker. And we do. 
little tap of the corners. He keeps telling you the rating for Rusty Wallace. We keep passing each other back and forth, so it's just dropping just like that. I need to focus on breaking early for the corner so I don't overdrive them or run into somebody. I've done that twice already in the, since the green flag came back out. Ugh. All these Bush Series drivers are up front now. I'm not sure if that's because of the caution or what, but I can pass all these guys. They're still, like, all stacked up. Like, the racing's so different. Like, we got a bunch of slow cars up front. I did this. I did this. I put a bunch of slow cars up front, and now I can pass them all. They're all slowing down leaders, so I can pass them, too. Ugh, I think that's what's been happening. It took me a while to figure it out. Ugh, turn. The drive would shift in the third gear would be easier to turn. Is that 19th? That's not 19th? Okay, like, how can some of these guys be on the lead lap and then some of them not be? I swear, like, all the, the lap cars... Be a lap or be behind everybody, not in front of everybody, but I guess they did that back in 2003, whatever. All the lap cars get to be in front of the leaders, which is just so stupid, like that never made sense. That's something that I, I can't agree with. They made that decision to put the lap cars behind them and get the wave route and shit, instead of putting the lap cars in front of the leaders. I feel like they only did that to make it interesting back in 2003. Okay, next time by, we'll have two laps left. I'm trying to pass Kenny Wallace, I think I can right here, just gotta. I uh, crash into him. Okay, in third gear. I am diving way below the yellow line. Is this 19th? Please. No! All these freaking cars not for position! The one car is the next car for position. Look at all these freaking cars that aren't the one car. Like, the one car is in traffic, but I doubt we're ever going to get next to him. This is like three crossovers within one damn corner to try passing a lap car. There's Ryan Newman. Where did I hit Ryan Newman again during this race? I don't even remember. Well, he helped me finish the corner because my car can't turn. I don't know why I'm trying to pass these guys. I can't catch Jeff Green. Let's just try not to wreck it and finish the race. Oh my god, someone overheated in front of Jeff Green. Please, stop him. Stop him. Who's that? That's, uh... Oh no! You stopped in front of me, but you didn't stop in front of Jeff Green. Now it's Sterling Wilder! He's pissed off. I'm in 19th. That's worth a 60% rivalry. Damn it! Steve Park! He must have been really freaking salty to overheat his car in front of Jeff Green, but he kind of missed aimed it. He didn't actually hold him up so I could have the position. I still got a position, but it wasn't Jeff Green. We're going to finish 19th in New Hampshire. That is quite the comeback in New Hampshire. We banged the fucking shit out of this car, but it was worth it in the end. Kevin Harvick just got his fourth win of the season, I think. No! No! Why am I doing this? Tony Stewart! That's not good for him. It's good for me with the 19th place finish and all, but... If it's not good for him, then it's not good for anybody. I mean, it's one of those uh, happiness in the world increases meme cases right there. So we're in 28th place again. That's really good. Uh, like 24 points behind Kenny Wallace. I think we'll be able to pass him soon because we did finish in front of him in that race, I think. Or maybe he was one of the lap down drivers and I forgot. If he was a lap down, we definitely finished in front of him. So that's probably how we caught him. It seems that uh, Sterling Marlin and Rusty Wallace are the only rivals we have after that race. All the other guys are neutral, so that's good. But man, I could have avoided that situation with Sterling Marlin if I had just braked earlier. Same goes for Rusty Wallace if I wasn't trying to dive down to the bottom and get clear, but I wasn't patient enough. Um, rookie of the Race award goes to me again, so I'm starting to get more Rookie of the Race awards, but quite frankly, that doesn't matter. We're not going to be Rookie of the Year. As you can see, no sponsors on the car, but we will be using Jade Reversal's paint scheme at Dover. The night race, it's not supposed to have a night race, but it does because the A Sports is uh, yeah, they're still stupid back in 2003 with this great video game. Four races left on the fabrication shop like we learned at the beginning of the video. We need to go ahead and go into chassis. I'm going to decide to overall this because it will increase the tire wear, or tire grip by 3% and the tire wear by just 1%. So it's definitely worth it. Set that for two races. It's $177,000. But of course, we still have enough money to go to bodies and do some repair on this because quite frankly it's only going to increase the drafting and just by 1% if we overhaul so I'm going to just set this to repair for two races which is just $69,000 that's a great prize money right there and then our engine after that race is 95 condition but it's still got a lot of power so that's really all that matters as long as our engine is powerful I guess we'll be ready for the next race at Dover we need a powerful engine at Dover uh, I really need to upgrade the pit roof I can because I made a mistake that time and I need to stop that from happening. So I'm officially going to do it after I finish all this stuff. So see you next time. That's that and episode over.